Rancor's Brothel presents The Curse of Strahd. <laughs> Pither. <laughs> I didn't see it. Ah, damn. Just looking at that carrot. Wow. I didn't see it. If you want to reroll that. Roll one. Okay. Does a ten hit? It does not. Your spear is broken. What about uh twenty-four? No, it does not. You're hitting the one in the front, right? Yep. Okay, go ahead. For 15. So you run up and stab with your spear, and that one just sort of winks out of existence. Monk, it is your turn. Okay. Um, Sorry. Now, I'll uh, burn a key point and use Step of the Wind so I can get to that one. Sure. So I got extra key points now. Um, but that's my bonus action, so I can only hit twice. Mm, does a 12 hit? Nope. You feel if there were numbers in this game, you missed it by one. Okay. 27, though. That one hits. <laughs> it does hit. You punch the thing right in the face. It's just a for a magical nine damage. Nine? It is still a floating skull, although that fire around it is very dim. Uh, we go back to the top of the order with Unda, who is padding out flame and feels real terrible about now, I'm going to imagine. Fuck the one in the back. <clears throat> well, you gotta hit it first. Only no. chance you can miss. It's auto hit. That's a 14. I feel oh. like that should hit. Because <laughs> there was numbers in this game. Goodbye over once. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. Jesus Christ. Well, I get plus 4 against my enemies now because it's. Uh, I feel like you say that every, every time. <laughs> well, every time. I get plus 10 on the. Uh, one of the, the angel. <laughs> 19 hits. 18 damage. Alright, you let loose with a with another arrow. So two arrows seem to pierce it. Uh, one through one eye, one through the other. The flame dims as it sort of shudders. So it's just like this now? No, they're kind of incorporeal, so I assume, you know, they're not like... They're magical, so I'm assuming that they kind of like fly through and go out the other side and it kind of shudders and then the flame gets softer. Hmm. Mechanically, that doesn't do anything, but I imagine them... Uh, if you ever play Castlevania, yeah. I think a lot of the that you see in Castlevania, that's what I think of when I think um, of Flame Skulls. I'm also going to, like, <laughs> back up. <laughs> <clears throat> it is Casimir's turn. Neither one of them are looking particularly healthy. If you could strike with a non-cold spell, you feel like you could do it. Uh, Casimir's going to cast Magic Missile at the one in the back. Sure. Uh, I guess you get it both, can you? Can you to one of them I don't know that I want to. You don't know that you want to kill both of them? I don't know that I could kill both of them. Your DM would recommend you maybe roll these one at a time. I have to declare them at the beginning, so... Yeah, fair enough. I'm metagamey. I'm not that metagamey. All right. Okay, two at this one, one at that one. I two, two at the one in the back, one at the one in front of Matt. I would say that's a good call. Nine damage to this one, to the one in the back. Poof! It goes out in a wink. Five to the one at Matt. That one now is like a oh. barely kindled uh, match. It is barely alive. Um, if you want to let me hit it, it'd be great. <laughs> no, let <laughs> me. Let me. Uh, Davin? 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 Yeah. yeah, Davin rolled like a 19. Okay, he will sacred flame this one. It needs to make a dexterity save. Okay. <clears throat> Magical resistance means I get advantage. You bet disembodied Shh. Dexterous as f***. Yep, it, it made it. I rolled an 18. It goes, ha ha, and dodges your sacred ha. flame. Yep. Ha 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 ha. Um, okay. These are kind of one-hit wonders, so I don't really know what I'm going to do with it again. I didn't expect to get this far. Um, yeah, sure, let's do that. And the monk is standing right there. It's not very smart, is it? Okay. No, it's actually really smart. I have to retcon something. Uh, I was wrong. I looked at the wrong spell. Casimir does not have protection from energy. He oh, has, he doesn't. No, he has protection from evil and good. But you have evasion, so. In that case, I would say it'd be shut the f up. It's he's going to hit me right the f now. <laughs> That's when you have your f 
Epiphany that you're a dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen doesn't hit, right, Matt? No. And that one doesn't hit either. That was a crit one. You see, like just laser beams of fire shoot out of both eyes and around you. Hither. Can you hit it? Big whiff, big whiff, big whiff. No better. No better. Um, I don't know. Does a 28 hit? Um, actually, intervals of 14 do not. <coughs> you stab it in the face for a assume at least one point of damage because yes. that's all it had. It explodes. <laughs> They're really not that hard to kill, but if you let me get a pop off there. Wow. Uh, you each get 660 experience points. There are three doors to the left hand side, the and there is one large double door at the other end of the hall. Uh, there's a body. There's a body. There is a body. Inspect the body, please. Oh, oh. Um, the body. Yeah, I forgot. I marked, had it marked on there. Thank yeah. you, Troy. Um, it appears to be a charred corpse in what remains of maybe a slightly light blue robe, as best you can tell. There's not a lot there. Um, <coughs> does appear to be a staff. I will pick up said staff. Uh, you can go take your smoke break now and you talk to Trey. Alright. <laughs> 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 you wanna uh, go outside and have some second hand? I guess. So, to everyone else here, this is, uh, this is not as bad as I have made it seem. I have, in fact, I have, in fact, made it bad, uh, just specifically, uh, because it's an aspect of the game we don't play with very often, mm -hmm. and just simply making them leave the room is going to make them doubt you. Gotcha. Um, essentially, this, I don't know if you attune right away or not. I don't know that it's something that you'll care to use at all, um, but because it was enchanted, it's got a, basically it gives you a flaw, and we don't play with flaws, really. But basically, it just adapts your character. So you receive the following flaw. Basically, there's a slight intelligence, not necessarily the weapon, but you suddenly get the thought that you you now crave power above all else and will do anything more, uh, anything to obtain more of it. So you basically become mad for any sort of power. Okay. Um, specifically magic, if you can get it. Um... The staff itself, I'm trying to look it up right now, for whatever reason I now can't find the magic items. It's something that probably the wizard who created it would have imparted upon it. Um, you actually cannot attune to it, but you, you pick it up and it hums, and you realize you picked up something very, very impressive. Um, but that I, is... I, I, I get the feeling that I cannot attune to it. Or... Yeah, you know. Whatever this is, you can't use it. And maybe that's your, maybe that's your motivation. Like, you pick it up and you, you get the sense that this is something powerful that you can't use, and you need something else. You need something. Basically, the, the way that the flaws and the benefits and stuff work, they just kind of, they're just character building things that D&D &D has put in. Mm -hmm. So you just now have this undesirable urge to find more power and to get, and to hoard as much of it as you can. This isn't, this isn't quite as bad as anything else that's going on to anyone else. Yeah. It's, it's something that you can resist, but it's also, it just tweaks your character a little bit, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah. Is, is, is that as long as I'm holding it? or No, no, no. This is a permanent character okay. change. Um, would I know to distinguish that, like, say, I wouldn't want to steal, like, his, his aim, the Raven kind of aim, because like, I know I couldn't use it? You're not, you're not compelled to use it. Uh, you're, basically, the character flaw is just a... It's the kind of thing that in sort of D&D, &D, they kind of want to give you, like, uh, inspiration for following flaws and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, just to make it a little more... Just having them leave the room is already going to make this more interesting. Yeah. Uh, so probably you don't need to do it any more than that, other than maybe be a little more obsessive-compulsive about things that show inherent power. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. Even though you know you can't use it, you probably would not give this up. Okay. If that makes sense. So I'll give you a chance before I say anything to him so that uh, you can look over flaws and how they work. But again, it's not... It's just to add... Uh, as far as I know, there are no penalties or anything like that. It's just a character trait. So if you had another personality trait that you picked before as a flaw, it trumps that flaw. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I I just... Yeah, I guess I was just wondering how much it yeah, would influence me. So, like... I mean, I think maybe maybe the major thing is that even though you, you have this staff, you probably would not part with it. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, you know you can't use it right now, even just from picking it up, but maybe if you gain more power, you could use it. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, 
it's just sort of, uh, you're, you're Gollum at this point. You know what I mean? Like, it's your precious and you're not going to give it up. Okay. But you also are struggling, you're also fighting to attain as much power as possible. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, <clears throat> if I'm trying to obtain half, if that's a thing, like, but if it's just like, for instance, like, like I said, Devin has the, the, the symbol of Ravenkind. I know that I wasn't previously able to use that, so I wouldn't seek something. I wouldn't seek that specifically. Right. Because you, it wouldn't give me really power. Right. I think that you're going to look for things that you can actively use. Yeah. And if it demonstrates its power to you, like the amulets or whatever, you might try and seek it out. I don't think you need to overstep any bounds of your characters. This isn't changing yeah. your alignment. No, this isn't no, no. changing your... Yeah. But it's just making you a little power hungry and a little greedy. Does that okay. make sense? Yep. There's not going to be any any sort of will saving throws or anything revolt regarding this if you do pers- uh something per- uh, particularly sneaky or devious that particularly does this it's probably worth an inspiration just because you're playing up the flaw yeah but like i said just having them leave the room i think will be effective enough yeah good yeah okay um are we good yeah. i don't know are we good <laughs> uh let's have everybody including casimir make perception check well not try. Uh, i got 16 okay uh, not high enough. Okay. Um, Neither one of us. So, 26. the monk and Unda, uh, you both see uh, Pither go over to the body, and you see him kind of roll over this um, very much... Uh, uh, desiccated. No, 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 it's not desiccated. We're, we're, we're more Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru on this. Like, <laughs> there's not, not a lot. There's not a lot of meat on that bone. Um, and you both see him... To kind of look at something, bend down and pick it up. Uh, Uno, you actually see for a moment as he picks up, it looks like a staff of some sort. I mean, it's decent size. As uh, Uno, as you see him pick it up, you see sort of a figurative glow in Pither's eyes. A literal glow. Figurative glow. He's sort of, maybe it's particularly shiny or looks valuable or something, but you see him sort of pick it up and stare at it. You just, you just see him examining a box. Dr. Banner he's literally just glaring down. at his staff. <laughs> huh? He's just glaring at his staff. It's just sort of like you see him uh, uh, when they when they pick up the Grail in Indiana Jones. Like you all you get that that sort of pinging shot of it reflecting off of them, and they kind of just have the wide eyes, sort of like that. Yes. Okay, so it's momentary, and then it stops, or he's yeah, no, it it, it kind of passes quickly, just sort of like ooh. So you're like, man, that's probably expensive. Peter, is everything okay? Yeah, no, he's fine. Cool. What you got? Staff. I don't. Well, I I think the magic's gone out of it. I don't get much from that. Uh, roll Arcana for uh Casimir. <clears throat> Twenty five. Uh, Kaz- you see Casimir sort of turn, and you see his eyes grow wide. He's like, "That's a staff of frost." Here, let me see that. And he starts walking towards Pither. Mm, no, I think I just hold on, hold on to this. I. Uh, okay. I. I. I don't mean to be insulting, friend, but I don't know that you can use it. Um, I don't know that you can use it. Well, I'm pretty sure I can. <laughs> what? <laughs> when, when you came and got us outside, I was like, oh, is that going to be your superpower? Your, your dick now? And then, I learned it from you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, Casimir kind of reaches out, but his hand is sort of, you know, suspended in space, kind of looking around at everyone else like, I mean, I can examine it for you. No. I'm good. Okay, well, that's 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 a very valuable uh, wizard's item. You're gonna trade that out for your staff or for your spear? Trade what out for my no? The staff? No. Okay. Well, this is all fun. Can we uh, carry on with the killing of things? Where'd you like to go, monk? Staff, all we find. Uh, yeah, you see that. Otherwise, the corpse. There's there's literally nothing that there. If there was a spell book or something of that nature, it's long gone. I mean, flesh is gone. Yeah, I'll go over to uh, the first side door. Okay. And? Per- perceive from the outside. Roll perception. Thirteen. You perceive nothing? Okay, I'll just kind of... Not, so there's no... I don't see any traps or anything? You perceive nothing? Okay, I'll go ahead and just try to open the door. Oh, uh, hang on. Okay. Hang on a second before you do anything. Like, like sneakily. Would... I would like to get some hit points back. I'm down at half the shot. Oh yeah, you you didn't take any, yeah. but <sighs> sorry. How far Did down you are you? Did you just f***ing dab? I dabbed. I work with children. 
Oh, I think she gave him a negative inspiration for that. <laughs> it's like, minus five experience points. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the only people I allowed to dab at my table are 12 years old. <laughs> uh, holy s***. Okay. Are you opening the door? Or are you resting? Or what are you doing? Well, I mean, well, no. You I'll can wait. also rest while I'll opening the door. Take matter. a short rest. I get my key point back. I burnt whatever. 45 minutes. Have, have, have those snacky snacks. It's cool. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I cure wounds on myself. I okay, I have a question. Many, yes, sir. So is Pether six. not trusting Casimir, or is he my precious English staff? Um, roll me insight. It needs to be quite good. Probably not good enough. Um, because I'm not just going to give it to you against the fellow PC unless it is extremely good. eighteen. Kind of hard to tell. Maybe a little okay. bit of column A, a little bit. Of well, because. I, I, I know that Pither is not trusting. So That's true. Okay. You erase another one of those imaginary rations that I don't make you count anyway. What you wanted to do? You listened to that door, you didn't hear anything. Uh, yeah, I'd like to open the door. Okay. As stealthily as possible. Stone blocks resembling tables stand in the center of this room covered in dust. Carved into the stone walls are niches filled with hundreds of dusty bottles. <clears throat> Cobwebs hang from wooden ladders that lean against the walls. The ceiling here is about 15 foot high. There's stuff in the bottles? I don't know. Are you going in? I assume you just opened the door. Uh, the monk is in front of me. Yeah, I'll, I'll go in. I don't have okay. dark vision. Yeah. You, well, I assume someone has a light. The spear is still lit. He'd have to cast light again. I Okay, it's a cantrip. Good. Okay. I'll make you cast light. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you go in. You see that it, there appear to be a bunch of empty bottles. All empty. Uh, roll Arcana. Ooh. Are you just saying I'll cast guidance on Casimir. Twenty-two. Um, Casimir would tell you that it, you know it's based on the cobwebs and how much like there's like six inches of <clears> dust <throat> on everything. If there were potions in these bottles, they've long since dried up. Like this, if this was a potion making area, which he agrees it looks like, any sort of components or potions that would have been made here are long past useless. Okay. Is there looking in that room when we go in the next door? Are you doing anything or are you just opening the door? Open the door. Okay. Uh, that is that one. It explodes. This 20 foot long, 10 foot high hallway of bare stone has an amber door at each end. It's sort of like a, what do I want to say here? Like a, how do I call it? Like a breezeway or something. Like okay. you open a door and there's like almost immediately a door like 10 feet in front of you. I had a question for you. Do you mm -hmm. still have the rubbing from the mausoleum? I do. Yeah? I actually wrote it down. Cool. Why don't you show that to Casimir? <laughs> okay. I don't remember what it says, though. Did we didn't listen? know. We didn't know because it was in Draconic. Oh, yeah. okay. Hey, oh, yeah. Hey, hey, uh, Cass. I'm oh, sorry. <clears throat> hey, uh, Cass. Uh, can, I get to, can I borrow your eyes for something? Yeah, here you go. He takes a look at it. I give him the rubbing. Here you go. Can you make anything uh, of this? We, uh... Found if it's Draconic, he speaks it. He does have Draconic. Argon Vostold. Hold on, let me go back to the Argon Vostold chapter. <laughs> Common, Elven, Draconic, and Vishtani. God damn. Is that what you chose? Yes. You <laughs> Yeah, here it is. He reads... <clears throat> well, I'm so happy that <laughs> I did something right. Here lie the bones and treasures of Argon Vost, Lord of Argon Vostold and founder of the Order of the Silver Dragon. Is it... <laughs> uh, Matt, you took the rubbing, right? Yeah. Give me an intelligence based roll. Yeah, I got five. Are there bones in there? No, there weren't. I was there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, was in there. It's kind of like, interesting. Does this mean anything to you? Maybe. You can roll a perception now, Troy. Uh, 15. Uh, you don't hear anything on the other side of the door. I will open the door. Okay. Uh, you see a set of staircases descending down. And did the skulls, like, actually poof, like, go away, or are there little bits of them? There are probably little bits of them. Hey, in that room with the bottles, are there any, like, larger, like, clay pots or something? Sure. Maybe scoop some of the bits in there? Maybe put something that can cast fireball in your pocket so your DM can use it against you later? I think that sounds like a great idea. What else do you need? You want to stop her? No. Ass f***. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the plan. How many clay pots do I can I have? 
There are six clay pots. Great. I need three. Okay. I'm going to put, you know, the bits and bobbins of, of the of the skulls um, in the three different pots. Okay. Um, I want to not have all of the, like, same bits in each pot, you know? I want it to be all mixed up. Right. I want to put one in the room with the bottles. Shut the door behind us. Okay. Right. Sure. We'll leave them. I don't know. Are we going to check the other room before we go down the stairs? The other oh, side room? Oh, I would assume so. So oh, there were three doors. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to check the other, the next door in the row then. Yeah, give me just a second. At first I shrunk my map too much and then I uh, opened it too little. Try, are you doing anything with the stairs you see in front of you? No, I would see the stairs and I would turn back around and let them know that they're stairs. Okay. Okay. So you're perceiving door number three then? Hmm. Roll me a perception. Nat 20. I'm pretty sure you don't hear anything. Let me double check. We heard murmurs to the west before. You did. You uh, do not hear, you do not perceive anything. Okay. Open the door slightly, take a peek. Uh, you see something very impressive. Hmm. I like impressive. I will read the description momentarily because it's actually a really cool description. It's a giant wiener! Dominating this room is a 12-foot-tall model of a dark castle with high walls and tall spires. Behind it, tucked in a corner, are some ruined furnishings and a wooden chest. Hey, uh, guys, jackpot, I think. Come here. I leave the two clay pots outside the door. Cool. Um, yeah. So it is a model of Strahd's castle and a chest. Yes. Uh, how how complete of a stone moment. cunning. <laughs> With advantage. A natural 20. Um, that is not just a model. At a glance, that's perfect. That's scale. Okay, does this open up? Not as far as you can tell. It is exterior only. Uh, <laughs> you. You got that mouse? <laughs> yeah. You should, <laughs> use your beast sense. Beast sense, that mouse, through the corridors of that <laughs> castle. Yep. <laughs> You're an artist too, so when you see through his eyes, you can f***ing draw it. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. can we do this? Ten, yes, minute, ten minutes and uh, beast be sense. Okay, listen, Gerald. Um, Gerald, I need you to be a good boy for daddy. <laughs> Bend down and actually look at it for a second. At the model. Yeah, like okay. actually just visually look at it. I will. Okay. There's nothing on the inside. It is an God exterior model it. only. Well, you just said it wasn't a model. <laughs> no, it's what I'm saying is is that it is a, for the dwarf, it is a perfectly sculpted model. So you can measure exactly how high the towers are. Like, it is to scale. And you believe that this was probably sculpted not by hand because you can't detect a single piece of tool okay. that did this. This was clearly sculpted by a very, very clever magic user. Okay. Okay, hey, Gerald, don't don't be too disappointed. Your, your time will come. It'll shine. <laughs> I put it back in my pocket and give him a piece of corn. Oh, you anyone? Corn? <laughs> Hold now. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Although if anyone, uh, if anyone does not have an inspiration, you can all have an inspiration because that is exceedingly clever. I've got one. I'm not giving up the map to this f***ing place. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, it took my mouse and your brain and your spell. Okay. So what you're saying is, it's in there, you just don't want to give it to us. No, it's a, no it, doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't specify. If it's specified in there, you guys are clever enough, I would give you something. I'm sure it's not giving you a map of the damn castle. <laughs> we would spend days here. Oh, yeah. absolutely. You'd be yeah. like, oh, let me just get your dish. Just uh, level up as we go and keep killing these skulls every day. There was, <laughs> there was a wooden chest. There was a wooden chest. Like, uh, um, <clears throat> what are we looking at? I mean, uh, maybe foot and a half long. Oh, yeah. Uh, can I check maybe, the Maybe, you know, uh, you can roll a, in, it's an investigation, right? It's perception. So I think it's investigation. For traps? It is. I was there for perception. Okay, the way it's supposed to be is if you are looking for traps, you are rolling investigation. Oh. You are investigating. You're using your intelligence. Oh, okay. Roll me an investigation. It's only a plus one. Fourteen? Uh, you do not perceive any traps. Although, looking at it more closely, you're like, I bet this used to hold maps. It's kind of the size that you would put map cases in. Cool. I open it up. It is empty. I lift it up and see if there's anything underneath it. Roll me a perception. That is an 18. There's nothing underneath it, but you do detect that it has a false bottom. 
Cool. What's underneath the false bottom? You find a tome. I thought you were going to say pick up the tome. Sweet. Hmm. Everybody needs to leave the room now. <laughs> Seriously? No. I kind of expected to, actually. <laughs> I actually don't know what it does. I didn't look it up because I didn't know if anyone would ever find it. You would know it's clearly a magical book. Okay. It's a magical tome. Do you sure. open it up? Sure. It seems to talk a lot about exercises of the mind. Like, like telekinesis? No. no. More like just... Almost like brain games. Like, you know, if Susie has eight apples and she gives two apples to Davy. Those aren't games. Those are math problems. Yes, there are math problems in it. This is not the book for me. Okay, intelligence um, or wisdom? The title of it is Book for Lucas. Arcana. Unless he's going to identify it. Good. It's up to you. I'll let you have an Arcana. Um, 11 minutes to identify it. You want to sit around for 11 minutes? I got a 19 on our con. I'm not proficient at it, but I got a 19 on our This has the words very rare around it, so I'm going to assume a 19 doesn't do it. I'm going to assume that it's true. Yes, you're not trained in it. Uh, that's a 28. On Arcana? Yes. I'll say he knows what it is. Then. That's pretty. That's that's a pretty good roll. Um, it is a tome of understanding. That, which means what? Is that intelligence or in wisdom? Wisdom. Oh, if you spend if you spend 48 hours over a period of six days or fewer studying the book, your wisdom score increases by two, as does your maximum. So you can have over the cap of 20. Hmm. Is that good for you? That would be very good for Davin. I. You'd also know that after doing so, the manual would lose its magic. So someone can increase their wisdom ability modifier by one, and they can go over the max cap of 20. It is a wondrous item. It is very rare. Uh, I go ahead and lock one of the clay pots in the chest. <laughs> Fair enough. Is there anything else in here? I thought you said there was... A there was, like, some rotten furnishings. Oh, okay. So you found a stairway down... We also have a stairway down way where we started at, and a fiend in the middle of this room. Yep. And you also have another room here. Oh, there's another room there. Okay. Yep. Can I perceive that door? If you'd like. Good job. Uh, perceiving. 18 plus, I think it's a 7. You hear nothing. You perceive nothing. I see nothing. All I up. know nothing. I can't see in the dark, but I can open the door. I guess I was supposed to look down that hallway. Um, so, Unda, you open the door. Mm -hmm. It explodes. No, you immediately are hit by... You're kind of in the dark. You may... You, you know, you're, you're getting soft torch light. Right. You listen, you open it up, and as soon as you open this up, you're sort of dazzled by torch light from the other side. Oh. Um, torches and sconces illuminate a dining table in the center of the room. Covering the table is a magnificent feast that fills the hall with rich smells of cooked meat, sweet vegetables, piping hot gravy, and wine. I'm not eating food from another crime scene. Nope. It's not happening. <laughs> nice. It took me a minute. I was like, what game is it? Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> eyeballs and shit. Lucas, make me, uh, make me some sort of intelligent, uh, smart. We'll go wisdom. How clever are you? Let's uh, just make a wisdom check. Just plus my modifier? Yeah, unless you're proficient in it or something. No, I have so plus just, one. I have just plus make one saving it, throw. Make it a saving throw. That's it's not. <clears throat> that is a 19. Now you can make me a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> Uh, 21. You shudder with the realization that if there had been light before, you probably would have seen it. Through the door? Under the cracks, something. You're staring in the pitch black. The door is made out of amber, which is translucent. We've discussed this. Giant bees. Giant Where have you bees. been for the last oh, hour? I know. Um, I mean, bees! You also, the aroma of the food is like it's freshly cooked. Like, you'd swear to God, the steam coming off that roast... That roast couldn't have been sitting there more than 30 seconds. It had to have just come off the fire. Right. And that doesn't make any <clears throat> damn sense. You didn't hear any servants. You didn't hear anyone setting down platters. Mm -hmm. um, so is this real? No. Go in and touch one of the torches. Like the fiery part of it. No, I mean, like, once we get the idea to question an illusion, normally we get an intelligence role to disbelieve it. Are you in the room to attempt to disbelieve a potential <laughs> illusion? I am. Yeah, I'll okay. walk in and look around. Pay no attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> Pay no attention to the pink trees. Now. 
Investigation. It's a roll constitution save, though. In real life. Apart from you. Martina and the what worms? <laughs> what are we rolling? I'm sorry. Investigation. Yeah, I got a four. Eighteen? That is going to be f***ing delicious to eat, Matt. Smells good in here. Davin got a sixteen. Also smells delicious. Looks great. Casimir <laughs> got a twenty-two. I got eighteen. Sir? Fourteen. Uh, Casimir and Unda, you both know that almost everything in this room is an illusion. So, can I tell what isn't an illusion? I don't really know. I mean, if I can tell it, some things aren't, and some things are, I should be able to tell what isn't. Yeah, but there's so much in here that's an illusion. <laughs> like, fair. But I'm now seeing past that illusion, in a way. You're, you're seeing it kind of flicker. Like, you're not, you can tell enough that, you know, the tape that's spinning isn't quite real. You're seeing the flames, like, flicker, 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 pause as it then loops the gif on repeat. I mean, could okay. I get a perception? Casimir is going to walk to the end of the table. Yep. Lay his staff across the end of the table and start walking forward. Okay. And, and see what falls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this should be fun. Uh, roll for initiative. So, you all see Casimir set his thing down, and you just are suddenly kind of shocked as it's just plates and platters and food are just kind of rippling. And then there's something in the middle of the table that he strikes that goes clink. And as soon as he does, all the lights go out. Who has dark vision? Devin. Okay. You and two. He can... still has light cast on his spear. Also true. Oh, everybody, everybody, to get everybody, get ready to see the turn. <laughs> you ready? This is me warning you. There's going to be a turn in a in a moment. Okay. Vision. So slide, 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 slide. slide, slide and slide, even slide. even for the so maybe for the two of you. It takes your minute, your eyes a minute to adjust because the room go, goes from several dozen points of light to suddenly one point of light. So you guys take a moment to adjust, but what you guys see is that you hear his staff clink off of something, and you see that he hits an ewer in the middle of the table, and it clinks and falls over. As soon as he hits that and it falls over, it's everywhere. It, like what you'd hold wine in, like a. Anyway, um. As soon as that tips over, all the lights go out, and you all see a bunch of spectral figures materialize like they were just sitting in the seats. And they all reach out with claws towards Casimir. Um, let's roll initiative, please. Unda, 15. Hey, you rolled low that time. I know. Good thing we're fighting undead. Yep. Uh, Matt. 14. 20. 20 for Pither. Casimir got a 5. Sweet. <laughs> Devin got a 16. Okay. These spectral figures appear and begin reaching towards Casimir. Um, we start with the guy in the bathroom. Troy is going pee, for those of you at home. Duration was about 12 seconds, maybe? Mm, but it, the sound of the splash, the point of pressure, all right, I think he really had to go. <laughs> it was a quick yet forceful 12 yeah. seconds. What's the it wasn't distance? a steady stream, too. It was that's the distance on that stream. Huh? What's the distance he has on the stream? Can you hit everybody? Hmm? I thought you were going to pee on everybody. Rage piss. Yeah. No, because you can't pee through a boner. If he has a rage boner, then you can't rage piss. You can only do one or the other. Yeah. You're I, up, I am angry! <laughs> I stab all of them. Yeah, I understand. Uh, what you won't do. Okay. So he rushes to the end of the hall. It looks like you can make that move without... Um, Brushing in and out of anybody's, uh... He's down this way, he's fine. Yeah, no, he, he can do it. Alright, you run to the end of the end of the room. Are you attacking the one at the head of the table, or are you attacking the other one? The one at the head of the table. Oh, swing! 23. You hit? For 12. Um, you stab through it, and you see the thing sort of writhe on the end of it as you, you push through its incorporealness, and then you strike some sort of matter in the center, and it sort of rises and turns to look at you with a wicked glare. Wicked glare. Uh, Davin. Did you get two attacks? Oh, I got an attack. Oh, man. <laughs> it was a 14 to you moved it. <laughs> we roll so it. Dick. I'm being fair. Sorry. 21. You hit. Max damage. 16. So you stab through, pull back, aim for that center mass that felt tingly, stab again, and it poofs. Cool. Davin. 
Uh, Would you like to roll to know what these things are, or do you know what these things are? There's something like a ghost. I don't know what. Sure. You've seen them before. Uh, There's something like a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw Just it. Trying on. to give you an idea of what yeah. you know you're doing. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll turn them. Go right ahead. Uh, wisdom saves. Oh, Jesus. Yes, all six. Yeah. All right. Number one rolls a ten. Number two rolls an eight. Number three rolls a fifteen. Number four rolls a twenty. Number five rolls a twelve. And number six rolls an eleven. Okay. Four's the only one that made it, I'm assuming. What's their CR? Fuck! Uh, all but this one run away. Okay. Uh, on their turn, right? Yes. Okie dokie. They run away from me. Okie dokie. So they're always going to cover the corner of the wall. Them. They're ghosts. They can go through the wall. I guess that's a fair statement. This is true. Unda, it's your turn. I mean, I'll shoot one of them. Okay. A 15 hit. It does. You strike the thing in the face. And it's undead. Is it? Is this guy's a ghost undead? No, no, no. no. It's Faye. Faye ghost. Um, I love Faye go. <laughs> Um, Particularly their root beer. Citrus drop. Yes, they're under peach. Twelve peach. Twelve total. Yep. That was number five. Reject your truth. And I'll shoot the same one. Yep, you shot it. The caramel apple's pretty good too. Twenty five will hit. Eight, one, ten, fifteen, uh, nineteen. And the second arrow puts it down. Poof. No longer exists. Uh monk. You can go. Come charging up. Yep. Start with four. Fire away. Uh, it's a hit. I'm not even going to f*** it with it. First punch. Right to the jugular. For ten damage. Yep. Is it alive? Yes. Or not alive. Similar <laughs> one. Eleven. I'm sorry, twelve. Twelve hits. Cool. Ten damage. Twenty. Hit. For 10 damage. So, you pop with the left, pop with the right, roundhouse kick, hit it in the head. You don't really hit anything. You feel your foot get a little chilly as you go through it, but uh, four dissipates. Uh, the rest of them run? <laughs> Straight from you, right? Yeah. How far? Uh, Matt? Yeah. Make me a will saving throw. You can't. Can. That's not a thing. Oh. Well, then I guess you'll fail. Oh, yeah. 15. <laughs> yep. You see Matt sort of shake? Okay, that's not what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> As they go whoop, right through you. Right through you. Wouldn't they go outward from him since they can go through walls? That's stupid. Yes, but you don't know the geography. You don't know the map, and I do. Hmm. Okay. If there was a room there, they would know to go there. Okay. If they can't go that way, they wouldn't... If they encase themselves in solid, they actually hurt themselves. Yep. Okay. But that that one would run closer to Davin to get to me? No, that one's going to go this way. Mm-hmm. Does I've he get count. attacks of on any of these? Uh, on one. Season. You get the first one. You what? won't hit the first one. Attack of opportunity on the first one. Yeah, hits 26. You get Four, one. nine yeah. damage. It's Casimir's turn. He's kind of just looking around and like, uh, 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 you're welcome. How long does that last? A minute. Okay. Casimir, uh, roll an arcana for Casimir. He knows it. Yep. Um, he hold, he grabs a hold of the ewer. Says this, this is what they're focused on. Um, I, I think they're meant to protect this. As he holds up the ewer. Which so. he'll tell you what that is in a second. He tells you. This is, this is a special magic item for this game. I don't think it's in any book. Cool. Um, but apparently Casimir knows what it is. Uh, maybe it's a maybe it's a Dusk Elf thing. Um, any poisonous liquid poured into the ewer is transferred in, is uh, transposed into sweet wine. And um, anyone who grasps the ewer can command it to be filled with a gallon of wine. But it can't produce any more until the next dawn. A gallon? It's pretty good, man. So, is it is it empty at this point? It is empty. So, if you ever wanted to poison somebody, you could. No, no, it. 
No, not, not at all. Turns the exact opposite. Of what you just said. <laughs> what, did I, what did I misunderstand? It turns poison stuff into wine. Oh, I just assumed that it was like it made it appear as if it was wine. No, oh, gotcha. Or it can create wine from nothing. So he kind of holds up the ewer, sort of like, "What do you guys want to do? I am an NPC. I will continue to hold this ewer until you tell me what to do." If they're focused on it, I assume it's okay. If we destroy it, will they go away? Why would you destroy a magic item? And also, probably not. Yeah. yeah. yeah f- that they'll be back in a minute. Let's kick their asses. Probably. We're still under this order, right? They're not that strong. Yes. They're little pussy yeah. ghosts. I guess just hang on to it. Then. I mean, would you like to do anything in your initiative, or are you all waiting one minute? I want to move to the other end of the wall. I would like to be right here so that I have, a, if we're expecting them, I would have a, a there is attack a, of opportunity. Okay. There's also a door there, just so you know. Well, here's what I will do. I will move back to here. They can move within 30 feet of me. So they will be standing like right down here waiting to come towards us. So, then we can do whatever we want to them. <laughs> okay. As long as far as I can only go 30. Unless I don't want to move right. Matt, you haven't taken an action. No, you have one minute, not just a rag. No one else has taken an action. Matt, would you like to take an action? I would like to just ready an action to whack the first bitch to get in my way. Okay, we're going to resume combat then. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm. I will resume it on their turn because Jeff is correct. They will move. See, so you killed one. He killed. You killed one. The you killed one, one. The yellow one took a hit from him. Yeah. No, I got it. So. so there should be four left. Yes. They are going to come back in on their turn. By 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So they can at least go to here. So they're going to come zooming back in from the wall. Just go ahead and hand this. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Matt, go ahead and make your opportunity attack. Well, on which one? Uh, the red die or the three, white die? I guess. Okay. 25. You hit. For 11 damage. Okay. And that was on three? Mm-hmm. And two is the one that's before. four. Okay, good. I did that right. Um, since they're coming in on their turn, they're going to go ahead and make attacks. So we will attack Matt. Two attacks. And I'm adding that. 21 hit? Yes. Second attack does not hit. Um, eight damage. That's yeah, my ten hit points. And I need a Constitution saving throw. Oh, why did I roll a d6? That would be great for me. Well, I got a three anyway. Uh, <laughs> I have a three on both. So seven. <laughs> um, reduce your hit point maximum by eight, as it sucks life out of you. Uh, Troy, I roll a 20, and a crit. I assume those are both hits. Okay. (laughs) First one is 10 damage, so you still resist necrotic, so 5. And I'll need that constitution saving throw. 16. You're good. Second hit... 24 damage, so 12 necrotic damage. And I need another constitution saving throw as it rakes through your very soul with its claws trying to drain life out of you. 11. You succeed. You feel it grip upon your soul but you're able to continue holding on to the essence that is you. Um, Kazmir's turn. Kazmir will firebolt this one. Go ahead. It'd be a 15 to hit. You hit. 8. Fire damage. Eight to three. number three. Yes. Which was just hit by Matt, I believe. Mm-hmm. For eleven. It seems to mostly pass through it. <laughs> okay. Hit there. Um, I'm hit number one. Okay. Uh, I am number one. That's a crit twenty. Okay. Nice. You stab the spear through its head as it writhes and wow. wriggles nice. in pain. Um, twenty-three. And it just explodes. Ceases to be. Stab number two. For 21. It hits. So you bring the spear back, stab the other one in the face ten. for 10 damage. You hit it, but it is still alive. Ish. No, it was hit before. Did you know that? Oh, no. Hold on. Let me. Yeah, it's still alive. Davin, would you like to hit all of these creatures who have never been hit before? <laughs> 
I'm drawing penises over here. There is no. There's only one. Actually, he's, he's I'm drawing penises <laughs> over here. <laughs> I'm sure it's not keeping track of any numbers. That's Sacred flame at three. That's radiant, right? Yes. Dex save. No. For nine radiant damage. Number three explodes in holy light. Unda, which one of the ones that have not been hit would you like to attack? No, the one that's not been hit. <laughs> Fire an arrow through the muck. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to move so I don't hit the muck. Don't, I have to deflect arrow. And evasion. I'm good. I'm all dexy. Uh, 23. You hit. 13. You hit it. You deal damage. It seems to fade. Uh, 17 hit. It does. Uh, 16, 20. It's a good thing that one's never hit before. Yep. It's dead. So Matt, it's your turn. Good. Taking a step. Does a 25 hit? Yes, it does. For max 12 damage. You uh, leap over, flying knee, right in the face. It disappears. Uh, does anybody care if I get the magic jug of booze? <laughs> um, yes. Alright, why? Because you're like a zombie person thing. Does that mean you can't enjoy one? And you really, really don't trust you. Alright, whatever, racist. Anybody else have an issue with it? No, I don't trust you because you tend to blow shit up. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to blow up the magical booze maker. I don't know that. Okay, good for you. Uh, I haven't blown up this wand of secrets yet. If you had put those things in your pocket, right now they would have respawned. Nice. <laughs> it's not like I've blown anything up yet recently. Boom, flame skulls <laughs> appear out of your pocket. <laughs> what would you gentlemen like to do? Um, well, I mean, we kind of know the door there. It's just got the other balcony. It does? So, uh, we got the stairs, or uh, we got the possible fiendy... You would know that there would be another door back that way. Back what way? Well, if there's another balcony, you would assume that if the room is symmetrical, oh, there. there would be a oh, door Oh, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, let's, nice. go, let's go there. Are you going there? You opening the door? I'm going there. Okay. Oh, I'll wait there. <laughs> Just a thought. I don't... Looking at that, I don't know how, st- how solid it is. I will walk gingerly. This black marble balcony overhangs the northwest corner of the temple the floor of which lies 30 feet below. Nearly half of the balcony has fallen away, and obvious cracks have formed near its ragged edge. I will hug the wall. How much do you weigh? I don't know. 20 pounds. By Shire Reckon. That was not part of the book in here to to know how much... uh, That's because Goliath's in that one. What book is Goliath's are in? (laughs) Of your character sheet. Fill that up. Volos I am 310 pounds. Since you're huh. hugging the wall, I will give you a deck saving throw. 21. Fair enough. You are strong enough to do it. You all see Pither step out on that and start walking, and all of a sudden you hear a loud crunch, and Pither just leaps back and reaches for the door as the whole thing collapses underneath him down to the ground. So Pither, you're like hanging <laughs> From what used to be the floor, as it crashes to the floor below you. Kroom! Makes quite a sound. Okay. The weight was 250, by the way. So, literally almost no one in this party would have not done that. Almost nobody in this party would have not done that. How much your gear weigh? Yeah. You're in heavy armor, right? No. I'm in a breastplate. How much you weigh? 148. Been close. I'm not, I'm not carrying 100 pounds of gear. Alright. You pull yourself up. Pull myself up. Um, but there's still a door there. There is still a door there. It doesn't look like, unless you can think of something clever, that you're going to get there very easily. I mean, I have pretty good leaping skills. What is that on the diagonal? 5, 10, 15, 20. You can get a running jump. Can you do 20 in a running jump? Sure. No, it's like, I'm pretty sure I can. No, I'm pretty sure you can too. Yeah. I'm just asking if that's what you want to do. Um, The door's closed though, right? Yes. <laughs> He just runs, leaps, smacks, it moves a little bit, he falls thirty feet, comes running back around, does no, the same I'll pick thing. up I'll pick up one of them chairs and toss it at the at the door. Um uh, make me a dex base roll to see how well you throw an improvised weapon. Ten. You see him pick up this chair and just Ugh! and it just smashes on the wall like fifteen feet away from the door. 
Casimir is going to walk over and cast Mage Hand. <laughs> it's fine. Push, push he could have been, he could have been helpful before, but you know. You see a translucent hand just kind of push the door. <laughs> we'll say he can't quite open it because it is a heavy door, but maybe he can get he can get a little bit of a gap between it. Okay. He kind of pushes one one way, one the other. It's not quite open, but I bet you could hit that. I grab the door from Tossum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he said okay. You got a helm on? Probably. <laughs> he just tosses you like a missile slams into the door. He's got a shield. Yep. Well, I got one arm. Good luck landing easily. Land on the shield. Tuck and roll. Slide. You're sliding around. Ragdoll. Uh, so are we jumping over? Is that is that what's happening? Are we... Yeah, f*** it. Okay. Can you jump 20 feet? I think so. Okay. Just asking, because there is like a jump roll or something. Yeah. Athletics I'm roll. Pretty sure we looked this up and I can clear like... Way more than that. Where's it at? You still have to not roll a one. No. The... You roll athletics to go above the normal. Oh, that's right. Long jump. When you make a long jump, you cover a number of feet up to your strength score. If you move at least ten feet on foot immediately before the jump. When you make a standing long jump, you can only leap half that distance. So you're probably, what's your score, 18? My score is 18. Okay. So we say it's 20 feet? Yeah. 5, 10, at least 20 feet. So you still have to make a good athletics roll. Okay. 22. Cool. Our athletics? That's like a 20. Okay. 25. You see, uh, you see Pither run, jump, and you see him grab hold and push the doors open and lift himself in. What do you see? Wisdom saving throw. 15. Matt, you hear no response. So monk cries out, what do you see over there? You hear no response. Uh, okay, without, for fear of my companion, for my companion, I immediately burn a key point. For step of the wind to double my jump, di- jumping and leaping distances, and okay. I leap into the doorway. Make sure one of my flamed on one. fists ready to go. Okay, so you see uh, the monk fly, run on water. You I'd know, probably holler for them too. Crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Uh, Matt, <laughs> make me a wisdom saving throw. Fifteen. Gents? You gonna go across? I gotta figure out a way to get Davin across there. <laughs> My strength's at 15. Got plus 5 on athletics. Mm-hmm. Probably rope to an arrow. Yeah, I was thinking of doing that. Casimir not having any useful spells to tie it off onto. He can get himself across there. Mm. Something I never considered. What? Us both? <laughs> no, no, no. No, as soon as, as, soon as it collapsed, I was like, this is gonna happen. Um... What's going to happen? They're going to go over there, or oh, half of us aren't going to... A hundred percent. Yeah, no, I'm like, they're going to leap over there. And like, yeah. If neither one of them make the saving throw, this is going to leave you guys in a great conundrum. Okay, I have an idea. Can I, I have to read a spell. Inspiration and try again? <laughs> what spell are you trying to use, Jeff? Wall of Stone. Should work, right? You can yeah. cast at least... I can create a wall, a horizontal wall of stone coming out from this wall and connecting here. Okay. Ooh. Wouldn't that be a floor? What the f- the horizontal wall? A floor or a ceiling. Go ahead and cast a spell. Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure you spend it. Okay. You all run over there? Yeah. Um, I'm going to stop at the door. Probably going to knock an arrow because I haven't heard my two companions respond to anything. So. Okay. You well, stop at the door. No one shouted out since he jumped over. He didn't make any sound when he got there. Okay. <laughs> what would you like to do, Jeff, as you... Look in. You are looking in? Yeah. Uh, same saving throw. Damn it. What you fucking think was gonna happen? We we ate up all the stuff. Was... <laughs> huh? Guidance doesn't help on saving throws. Nope. You got not the inspiration you can use? Yeah, I'll use the inspiration. Roll a third. F you try. <laughs> Eighteen. Oh. oh you feel a slight tingle. You gotta make the roll too. I mean I haven't Okay. Uh, make Casimir make the roll, please. Um, you don't even have to look in. Oh, Casimir didn't make it. Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw. Looks like a single digit, so. Four. Okay, That's so. Jeff, you want to play D&D? <laughs> so. I use my inspiration. If you want. Okay, erase it. Eight. Um, 
No, it's a 13. I got five. I got five. So, you all are moving cautiously across this wall of stone, right? They get about, f- about five, ten feet away from the door. You feel this sudden welling up in your chest of emotion. Like, it, it's overwhelming. It's all-consuming. And then you kind of just, I don't know, maybe you focus on your god or you grab the holy symbol or something, but you kind of just force that down. But you get this sort of sympathetic vibe inside your chest. You notice that the other two, at the exact same moment, kind of just snap their heads up, and they walk into the room and immediately turn to the left, like they know exactly where they're going. Are you proceeding into the room? Yeah, I'm going in. I don't okay. think I have anything that'll... I take it back. I will cast Bless. Okay. Which does? Gives me a... It's like casting Guidance, except it affects three creatures, and it's good for attack rolls and saving throws. This bare stone room consists of a foyer to the east and a shrine to the west. Candlesticks draped in cobwebs stand in four corners of the foyer. In the shrine, a faceless obsidian statue stands in a raised alcove at the western end of the chamber. You notice that all of your companions are knelt before this statue. You also see slumped before the statue are two desiccated corpses in tattered garments. Two pairs of alcoves line the north and south walls of the shrine. So yeah, they're all just kneeling in front of this um, statue praying, Jeff. It looks like. They're completely silent. They take no note of you even moving into the room. You just walked into the basement of the Blair Witch House? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's basically what you guys are doing. If you'd like to, Jeff, make me a wisdom roll. Okay. I felt emotions when I walked in. You did. For the first time. Infrared. I rolled what? A oh, wisdom roll. Wisdom based roll. Uh, uh, like an investigation or something. 16. So you're looking at the corpses, right? Mm-hmm. The desiccated corpses that look like they're 100 years old that just had the life sucked out of them. They look like... <coughs> They would have been kneeling in the same spots your companions were, and then eventually would have just fallen over. Right. So, what's what's it sucking out of me? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm wondering if those corpses like just just no starved to death. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you would get that assumption, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to. Tr- I don't know if it'll work. I'm going to cast calm emotions. Does that affect them? Those calm emotions do. It calms emotions. No, I mean, that's literally what it does. It calms people down. No. You put your hands on them, right? No, it's just a burst. Okay, you kind of walk up behind them and burst, and it doesn't affect them whatsoever. Yeah. They just continue to stare intently into the uh, sepulcher at the cloaked and hooded figure. How big's the statue? Is it like the other one? Yeah, about the no, same it's, size. Uh, it's about four feet tall. You'd say it probably weighs about 200, 250 pounds. It's probably on a slight pedestal. You know, maybe it, br- it would bring it up to eye level. So maybe it's on a pedestal, maybe uh, three or four feet in diameter and maybe, you know, foot, foot and a half high. Okay. Um, attached or sitting there? Uh, do you walk over and touch it? No, I'm looking at it. It doesn't appear to be attached as far as you can tell. Okay. And they're looking at the statue. They are. They are. I'm... I got cold weather gear. I'm going to take the coat off and throw it over it. You all three are kneeling on the floor. You don't know why. What the f*** just happened? Where are we? I'm going to pull the coat back off. <laughs> now you have to do your check again, right? No, I already passed it. I should be immune to it for so long. That's how most things are. I don't know. You are... We're about to find out. You about all the starved to death in we here. We all did. Um, actually, I think that uh, you feel grossed out by this statue, by the way, physically. Like, it makes you feel un- a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Just so you know. You feel repulsed. Um, I'm going to say all of you can make wisdom saving throws as he pulls the coat back off. What about me? I'm going to say you're good for now. Okay. So ro- roll for Casimir. Yeah, I failed. 17. Troy? 14. Uh, what, Casimir? Nin- 19. So Casimir and uh, Unda kind of just keep looking at you curiously. You see um, both Pither and the monk just snap back to looking at him. And now Unda and Casimir are both kind of like, ugh, arcana, since Casimir's awake. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw the coat back over it 
He's like, this is strong. Whatever it is, this is strong. Uh, you guys suddenly are like, find yourselves kneeling on the floor or staring at a statue again. Or staring at a coat over a statue. With the coat over it, I'm going to push it over. Try and smash it. It I don't. breaks as soon as it hits the floor. Does it? Yep. What the hell happened? Uh, I came to rescue you because you didn't answer. It's a level 8 enchantment, by the way. <laughs> uh, you were all ensnared by this magic statue. Uh, I don't know how to say that word. I've seen it a million times. I know what it means, but I don't know how to say it. Antipathy? It's an you know how to say antipathy? I don't, know how it's, I don't know how it's pronounced. Antipathy? It's antipathy sympathy spell. I've never even heard of that spell. It's a mother I was reading this, I was like, oh, sh**. Oh. So you sort of find yourself in an alcove that is mirrored similarly to the alcove across the way. Um, there is a door leading there. Um, you also wake up on your knees basically next to desiccated, mummified corpses, by the way. Is there anything on these corpses? Yeah, checking them. Rolling the bodies. Nope. Mm, they just appear to be in cloaks. All right. Nothing else is in the room. Candles in the corners. I mean, there's a door on the other end. Uh, we found a secret door on the other side. You did find a yeah. secret door on the other side. Do y'all like me to use well, my little magic stick? I want to perceive the actual door. Roll perception. Uh, yeah, eight. You hear a buzzing. This is where the bees live. <sighs> the bees are in here. I'm going to go to where we found the secret passage right on the other side and like... Roll perception. 20. You find a secret passage. Lucas, are you opening that other door where the bees are? Sure. Um, so Lucas, I'm going to go ahead and say that you find yet another, um, alcove. you find another little alcove with an area to shoot, uh, down on the main floor. Try to find something a little more interesting. Nothing, nothing in the alcove, though. Um, nothing in the alcove. Um, narrow room has an arrow slit in the center of the south wall. Troy, you open this door and make me a deck saving throw. Ten. You hear the noise, but you're not able to move from the low rumble that occurs just as soon as you open this small five by five foot room. As hundreds of skulls come pouring out of this door and tumbling around your knees. This room is probably 30 feet high, and as best you can tell, it is packed from floor to ceiling with human skulls. Neat. And it looks like they're... All igniting on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Make me another perception check. Just ten rolls. Seventeen. He's standing right there. There appears to be something attached to the ceiling in this room. It's thirty feet high. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like. You can't quite see it. You would have to. You're gonna have to move the skulls and actually, you know, enter the room. But it looks like there's. Use your lantern. I mean, it, there's crap in the way. Like as you're standing there moving around, mm-hmm. it's just like when somebody fills a room with balloons, like. Skulls just keep yeah. pouring out of this. I'll, yeah, I'll swipe some skulls out and light a torch and like... You all are seeing him just human skulls just flying out of this fucking room. It's like someone opened a coat closet. That's all the bigger that it is. Is anyone going to help him? Sure. Give me an idea sure. of how long this actually takes. Yeah, I mean, if there's that many, I guess we can all dig in. Um, It takes five minutes for a single character to clear a path to just get into the room. Uh, anyone else want to make perception checks? Yeah, sure. 19 plus 7. Uh, Lucas, there's another secret door on the other side. Okay. Attached to the 30-foot high ceiling of this, uh, dark sepulcher is an upside-down iron chest with a barrel-shaped lid. Upside-down iron chest. Yep. How high up? dangling by something? 30 feet. No, it's stuck to the ceiling. How big is this room? It's five by five. Five right? by five. Uh, uh, it's actually ten by ten. Sorry. Oh, well, I changed that. Not a lot. I mean, it's five by five. You can put your back on one side. Exactly. Walk I can scale it. Lucas, you know, there's another secret door there. Okay. I point out the other secret door and the thing on the ceiling. You know, we're both pretty tall. You can do that back to back link arms thing and just walk up. <laughs> um, you know, Casimir can cast fly. You can also, or that. You can also cast mage. I don't know that. True. Let's go through the door. <laughs> Davin, are you if opening going- the door? Yeah. Davin pushes his way into the next room. This 15-foot high room contains the trappings of royalty, ornate furniture, exquisite rugs and tapestries, and decorative statuary. Everywhere you look are lit candelabras atop small tables. 
The beauty of the decor is undone by thick dust and cobwebs. Standing in the center of the room is a decrepit skeleton clad in tattered robes. Red pinpoints of light burn in the skeleton's eye sockets. It looks at you and says, Do I know you? Our title track, Nocturne, provided by Sleep for the Weary off their new album, Nocturnes. To find out more about Sleep for the Weary, check them out on iTunes, SoundCloud, Facebook, and at sleepfortheweary.com. Join in the brothel conversation on Facebook. Questions, comments, and suggestions can be sent to betweentwocrits at gmail.com. Like what you heard? Subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Most of all, keep circulating the tapes. Yeah.